Hello, my darlings, and welcome. Just have to get myself centered on the camera. Let's see if that's better. My little technical difficulties. Yeah, I think that's probably fine. How's everybody doing today? Are you all ready to learn gouache with me? Because that's what I'm learning today. We got our cappuccino stuck to the table for some reason. Hello to Scarlet Nymph and Karen, Boulder Girl. Meg is here, Julie. Hello. I'm excited to see what I create too. This is the first drawing that we're gonna do. This is my first time painting on black paper and I'm excited to learn about gouache which is opaque and I have two sets that we're gonna look at one is called Erdix and it's a big Big pans, but not a lot of colors. Hmm. In my brain, white goes on the top. I don't know why. Light to dark. And I'm going to keep uh, filming. Flamingos here. Hi. We just started. You're not late. Nobody's ever late. This is called gouache. So this is, looks like acrylic, acts like watercolor. So it is re, um, reactivated with water. So it doesn't, um, it's not plastic like acrylic. It doesn't dry permanent. Meg, what are you crafting while uh, this dream is going on? So that's my 18 colors. And then this one I um, got specifically because it had half pants. And so I could get double the number of colors. They're kind of similar to each other. So like, uh, you know, a lighter yellow, a darker yellow, a lighter blue, a darker blue. So I thought that would give us a little bit more choices while we're learning this brand also just has single pants that, that are the large size but I went with the, the little divided ones Elena's here hi they're brand new so I haven't messed them up yet <laughs> And this is our drawing, so we're going to try and figure out a color palette for this one. I'm going to start out with something that's kind of fairly straightforward. Meg says, I'm actually doing some quilting, but I'm also working on a sigil tarot deck. I haven't started drawing up my designs yet, and I thought, why not do it with everyone on stream? I love that. I love it when people bring their bring their projects. So I'm going to use a just a really bright bright red. Thank you. 
So I'm just making uh, color swatches right now, just so I can um, see how they dry. Sometimes reds, um, you have to try twice with reds. Reds and yellows somehow. So I just want to see how they do. Also want to look in this one for the red here. There's a bright red up here. So I'm going to try that as well. So I'll do that one over here so we know which was which. I assume that it's like a lot of other craft supplies where it's like everybody gets their paint from the same place and then repackages it. So I don't expect to see much variation, but you never know. I'm gonna make this one bigger. Helpful Naturals here. Hi, welcome. We're learning to um, use gouache paints. They're like watercolors, only opaque. And then I'm um, gonna do some green. So the berries on the, the drawing, which I'll re-show you in just a second, are called bear berries. And I think they're native to me here in Southern California. Or the US at least. And they end up being uh, when when needed they're a survival food for bears. They're not a preferred food but if they're starving it keeps them alive. Probably should be using a slightly larger brushes brush for these swatches. Okay, so the bear berries is going to be red and green, just like they appear in nature. I don't think the bear is going to be though. So we're going to do this the uh, sun and uh, oranges and yellows, and then we are going to do the um, bear. Probably kind of maybe gray, blue, or purple. And the salmon are going to be gray and with a green and a little bit of a pink. It might be fun to um, paint in the bear like a navy blue color. I can already see we're going to need to come in with the camera a little bit to be able to see color. And then maybe a little bit of purple on top of that for the details or the, the light, the light bits. Let's try the blue in the other palette. These are probably the same paint manufacturers. I don't see that much difference between 
the red, the blue, and the green. Helpful says, I've been binge buying Oracle decks lately. Don't get burnt out. Mine's going to come out in 2025. Save a spot in your shelf for my deck. And let's try the purple. Another option for the bear instead of a navy blue is to do it in kind of a, like maybe a sagey blue or a really deep green. Like this, this deep teal, that might be fun. Should we do him just as a brown bear? I mean, I don't know if that's very exciting. I don't think we can do black on black. See, this palette is where we diverge from the other one that only has 18 colors because these purples are very different. To intuitive I have to intuitively pick these colors well we know the Sun is going to be yellow and orange so let's let's start with stuff we know and I'll just put this aside to use as kind of a, a mixing palette to see color And then this stuff works just like watercolor. So I'm gonna mix a light pink. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of red to it to kind of try and make it that peachy salmon color. Oh, hey, that's not bad. Maybe lighten that just a tiny bit more. Okay, cool. We have salmon for our fish. And then I want to do this yellow, but I also want to add some white to it because the yellow, when you put the yellow straight onto black paper, it kind of shows through and it makes the yellow almost look green. But if you add white to yellow, it makes it just a little bit more opaque. I don't know why I think the white paint's just more opaque than the yellow. Something, something to do with the pigment. Science, I'm sure. I'm wondering if I should just go with brown for the bear. I don't think he'll pop. Maybe I go with teal. We could do a teal bear. Does anybody have a thought? You. 
I'm going to use a lot of teal and purple in this um, Oracle card deck. So I want to start, start with that and make sure that I hit those same colors. Okay, so um, that's interesting. You have to use, you have to keep it wet, but not very wet. This is going to be very interesting for managing the wetness of my brush and my paint. Robin says, teal is an undertone and then brown. That's what I'm thinking. or even black for my, um, my little uh, line details. Because this paint is opaque, I'm going to be painting over my line details. So what I did was I scanned this in and then made a printout of this piece of art. That way I can reference where I had drawn these lines because I knew I was going to paint over them. Oh, I can see it's going to take two coats for sure. Oh, I, uh, we did our little meetup at Disneyland the other day on the 30th of January. I know I promised you all a video, but I honestly did not take any video of us at the meetup. It was just five of us hanging out at a picnic table, just chatting. It was kind of, uh, not really a, a filming moment. We were all just chatting and getting to know each other and that kind of stuff. So I did pull out the camera though, because of one of the feral cats of Disneyland came around. So I did get some footage of that. Okay, I watched a lot of videos about 
of people painting with gouache before this stream, but it's not as easy as they make it look. There are over um, 200 feral cats at the Disneyland parks. They are encouraged to live there. They are provided food and veterinary care. And in return, the idea is that they keep the mice and the rats and the pigeons out of the park. And I had just told everybody, maybe if we're lucky enough, we'll see a feral cat and one just came right up. I mean, five witches at a picnic table. Of course, a cat would try to come and be our familiar. Red Lorraine says they feel the energy. Yep. It's very nice that they take care of the cats, says Julie. Robin says, I think your bear is coming together very nicely. I hope so. I just, you know, I can always start over or try it on white if I don't like this, but I thought doing my um, Oracle deck on black would be maybe the way to go. But we're kind of all learning together here. My Oracle deck is not going to be too, um, it's not going to be negative per se, but it's not going to be relentlessly positive either. I think I'm hoping for every card to have some kind of, um, modern message that helps people in the real world get through their days and their weeks and not just be super positive and handholdy.
So this card is going to be about survival. Having the resources to make it through a tough time in life tough season, basically, you know, the idea of hibernating during winter, um, the idea of a bear, you know, and the salmon, that's how they, <clears throat> that's how they prepare for winter. And there's always a lot of protective energy uh, surrounding the, the idea of a bear. So the themes of this card are going to be, you know, preparing for, um, you know, an upcoming hard time, survival, getting through it, protection, success with the sun. There's going to be a lot of elements there. I haven't landed on a name for the card. I'm trying to keep it to one or two words for each one. I think I need to step away from the bear and start working on some other things. Let's let that guy dry. We've lost his whole face and all of his details. <laughs> Meg Olson says, also perseverance as well. I'm thinking about how the salmon swim upstream to get to their spawning ground. Ooh, Meg, did you just name my card? Is this card named Perseverance? <gasps> yes, thank you. Gotta write that down somewhere. I can't remember anything more, for more than five seconds.
Let's work on our salmon because I know that we are going to use gray and a little bit of green. I can't get too detailed because we are working at 3x. So the card itself is going to be the size of a playing card. So these details are going to become very small. So I can't I can't do too many details. or they'll just get lost. I'm just gonna let each color dry and move around the page so that each thing can dry. That's why the bear berries are looking so um, kind of not like a real bush but just like a little element in the corner because if I once I shrink it down it'll start losing its its uh, detail So we're learning all of this together. It's a learning process. So I don't know how dark these things are gonna dry or how many layers I need to use yet. So we'll just figure it out together. Also, once I'm finished with the artwork, I'm going to be scanning it into Photoshop. That way I can lighten and darken things as well in uh, digitally if I need to.
Helpful says, I love the texture of that paint. It looks like mousse. Julie asks, well, all of your cards have an animal on them. Most of them will have, yeah, some kind of animal, bird, insect, um, astrological symbols, not, not every single one will have an animal, but I would say a majority will. The first Oracle deck I ever, not the first, the third or fourth Oracle deck I ever designed was for um, animal spirits. So I've always been interested in that. It's like watercolor in that you have to control the water, but it's not like watercolor either. It's interesting. I think I'm going to keep the artwork really simple because it's going to be shrunk down so much smaller, but I do want to have like highlights and low lights. I love animal, Julie says, I love animal decks, but have had trouble connecting with them. I got Deborah Blake's tarot and I love that it has a cat on every card. I use them to communicate with my kitty that I lost. Well, that's a very interesting idea. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. Probably have to come back again. Let's see about these leaves. I think I'm gonna do a double uh, green. I'm gonna just start with that basic Kelly green and then I'm gonna come in with this teal green to kind of bring that in. Bearberry is actually kind of a shrub. I 
I don't even know why I put that pink there. I don't think I'm going to be using any pink in this painting other than the, um, the salmon. I got too many palettes to paint around here. I gotta move some, some stuff around. I also might have to use some acrylic paint pens to finish off some of the artwork because some of these really fine lines it is focused. It just doesn't look focused because of the black paper. Another thing I can do is manually focus it. That way it won't keep getting blurry every time my hand goes into the scene. Hey, did you guys all see um, the video that I made about my uh, witch's front door? I cannot believe how many people have watched that video. It's crazy. It's, it's very, it's had quite a lot of success. So I finally got the guts to show my face in a video. I filmed all the intros for all of my uh, A Witch's Home series for the year, all in one go. But I wasn't really happy with the way the audio sounded at the beginning. 
So I ended up buying a little clip-on um, lapel mic. So that if I do any more of those kind of standing in front of the camera speaking, it won't have that sound of like a hiss of being in the room. What did you guys think of the disclaimer? That's... I have a big, I had a big fear of um, showing stuff in my house and then people seeing the video and then thinking they needed to have all this stuff. And I wanted to kind of be polite about it, but also firm. It didn't really matter too much for this first video, but in some of the cases where I'm showing like my crystal collection or my tarot and oracle card decks, you know, I have quite a few I've, I've, uh, I've had, I've been reading tarot and collecting decks for years. So I kind of wanted to err on the side of firm but kind, but I hope it wasn't rude. But my videos usually don't get that many views, so I was really, um, I was really surprised at how many people tuned in. I think maybe the series is going to be a success for me. I always like to see stuff in other people's homes. I'm very nosy like that. It's also an inspiration for me to do little redos of stuff around my house too. I'm going to be redoing a couple of things for that series. And also some things that I'm not redoing, like my shelves and my apothecary, I think it'll give me that boost that I need to get in there and, and just straighten and tidy and clean and dust. You know, like you panic clean for when company's coming over, or at least I do. If it wasn't for people coming over, I wouldn't have the motivation to clean my house. During the great panini, the lockdown and the quarantine, my house got pretty dirty because nobody ever came over. I 
think that one was supposed to be for that. Maybe that one was supposed to be for that. Should I put another berry right here? Or maybe, well, this is water, so I should paint in the water. I think that I'm going to make the the rays of the sun are going to be yellow. So I think I'm also going to make the fishing pole yellow so it also stands out. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Everybody commented on the video and everybody was so kind. Thank you, Julie. I appreciate it. Honestly, I think that's why I got so many views on that video because people were engaging with it and commenting on it and putting a thumbs up on it because then YouTube sees that people are engaging with the content and they push it out to more people. Karen says, it wasn't rude at all, but clear. Okay, I was just a little bit worried. I run it past a few friends. I was like, how does this sound? As I work from home and I work alone and I work for myself, I don't have a lot of people to bounce stuff off. So a lot of times I come here on the, on the live stream and I just ask you guys questions. <laughs> See, like, why is some of this lighter and some of this darker? Must have just been the water content at the time. But, like, this is dry. So, this still looks wet, but it's dry. Yeah, and some of this is um, needs a extra... Helpful says, I would love to paint my front door purple, but my house is very old orange brick. Not sure how that would look together. Hmm. My Lorraine says, I can barely take care of myself, let alone all the things around the house you are doing. <laughs> well, see if you had a YouTube channel and you promised to do one episode a month, then it would force you. See, that's how I get things done. I say somewhere that I'm going to do it, and then I have this accountability. Actually, if you think about it, I only really do half of the videos that I promise or that I mention or that I think about or that I would like to do. I just load up my to-do list and then I just do whatever the time allows. It looks so much vi more vibrant when you first paint it and then once it dries down, it, it definitely needs a second coat. Okay, so let's see about this paint now. So the teal has started to dry here and it's supposed to be able to be brought back to life with water. So I'm gonna try this now.
Ooh, it works. It works. It's, it comes right back. In theory, I would love to come up with a color palette that a lot of my cards follow and then just set up a palette on the, on the ceramic and then just let it dry in between and then just reactivate and keep using the same palette so that I have continuity between my cards. What do you guys think of this? I'm not sure. Is it too weird? Oh wait, I already had the, uh, <laughs> I had the, try to get the focus back, bring it back. There we go. No, went too far, too far. That's how you know this live stream is real, not pre-recorded. Is the teal too weird? Is the other half? Mm. I don't know. Teal is perfect. Is it this? Is this too bright? Should the should the other green? Meg says, I just redid my apothecary shelf as well. I realized in doing so that I have incense coming out of my eyeballs. Me too. I, um, I asked a few of the witchy subscription boxes if they wanted to send me free boxes and I would unbox them on my channel. And I didn't realize that they would keep sending them to me. I thought it would be a, just a one time or a couple, a couple times. And so I've, my incense has gone a little crazy. Hopeful says, during lockdown, I don't think I got out of my PJs unless I needed to run to the grocery store. <laughs> during lockdown, I didn't either, but then I just decided to get up and get dressed like I was going to work every day because I was starting to get really depressed. Okay, so what about taking this green down a little bit? What? I'm overthinking this. Let's get to the sun. Orion, hello and welcome. Says, I loved your purple door video and disclaimer. I'm especially enjoying your channel and learning more about creating sigils. Oh, that's what I mostly have in almost every video. I try to put sigils everywhere. Okay, we're bringing this yellow back. Bridges here. Meg says, I'm also determined to use it all. So unfortunately for my roommate, it's going to start smelling quite herbaceous in our house. <laughs> Rob 
Robin says, sometimes if I find I'm unsure of an aspect of my art project, I leave it as is, then return back to it another day as I can see it with fresh eyes. Yeah, for sure. This, I'm, I'm not sure about these leaves. But I also need to just go look up what bearberry looks like again, and maybe that'll help me. I'm behind on chat. Bird says, hi, just dropping in for a few minutes. Love the card and hooray. Finally know what to do with the stack of black paper. <laughs> Thanks for the inspiration. Also, thank you, Amy, for the inspiration not to buy anything this year and use what I got. That is really great. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Rod Lorraine says, I feel like this card could have a dark doppelganger but it is christian for midsummer after they put him in the bear skin for a sacrifice still haven't seen that one i'm the only witch who hasn't seen midsummer karen said that's me every day every day of my life i change into clean pjs if i'm going out <laughs> Bridge says, oh yeah, the sigil on the door and then the paint over was such a great idea. I only do it with consecrated water. So seeing it can be done with a Sharpie and be painted over is fabulous. Brad Lorraine says, this year I'm doing the opposite. I kind of stopped doing anything but work the last couple of years. Depression has been hard. So now I'm doing self-care big time, which is including buying new things. Everybody's destination is a little different. For me, my priority in 2023 was visiting my family, my specifically my mom, and, and uh, that's a five and a half hour drive for me. And I went every single month, except for I think, I think I skipped two months, but I went 10 months out of the year. Um, to visit. But after a while, the drive started really wearing on me. So I said, hey, let's do, let's do twice the visit, but half the drives. So now I'm going to do six months this year, but I'm going to do longer, t double long visits, but not as many drives. But um, I really took a toll on my car in 2023, doing that many, that many uh, long trips. So this is the year that I save up for a new car because, well, it won't be new, but it'll be new to me because my car is not going to make it past 2025.
but it's a 2005, so I think 20 years is a really good long time for a car to last. Incognito's here. Hello, everyone. Hope everyone's having a wonderful night. I'm going to flip this guy upside down so I can do these sunshine rays. Oh, I didn't mean to go into the corners. The corners are going to be covered up, as is the top center right here, with a, um, a card number and some little corner details. My panther is actually a bear, but I have to add back in the detail. Let me show you the sketch because you got here just now. So this is the sketch, but we've just put our base color onto the bear. So um, we're going to have to bring back all the face and all the that stuff. But I totally see panther from what you're seeing here. Absolutely. Okay, I went all the way to the top, but I'm gonna this will be covered up. Some of these elements will be covered up a little bit. Okay, let's warm this baby up. Bridge says, Well, this card looks fantastic. The yellow just pops out. It looks a little pale to me though, don't you think? I'm gonna get some warmth in here. Do we think like one of these, both of these? Oh yeah, that's the one. Oh, I made it a little watery.
So for everybody who just got here, this is going to be shrunk down to one third of the size that it is now. So these tiny, tiny details aren't going to matter too much. Rabbit Moon Tarot says, thank you so much for sharing your process. Well, thank you for helping me figure out what my process is because we're just learning together. Julie says, I am checking things off on my bingo card. First time using that. Yeah, I didn't use my January one either. My February self-love one, though, is almost completely full. I just decided that I am too old to be doing anything that doesn't make me happy. So it's pretty easy to fill up my self-love and self-care to-do lists. I almost canceled the stream today, you guys, and went to Disneyland. And I would have if I hadn't already ordered um, some groceries to be delivered for... Um, a gathering that I'm having on Sunday so I couldn't leave my groceries out on my front porch all day while I goofed off at Disneyland I just looked at all the prices of the tickets and I realized that today was the last day it was going to be the really inexpensive price. They call it tier zero and it's $104, which is the lowest price um, ticket you can buy. thought maybe I'll just go but then I didn't but all the way to August there's no more $104 tickets as far out as you can look for prices and we've also had storms 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 you've probably seen it on the news we had three tornado warnings yesterday our phones kept going crazy. It was nerve wracking. But my Disneyland theory was that nobody would be there because the crazy weather has been.
Michelle says, I'm painting my Ostara and March pages as we speak. Hello, Michelle. Did I say hi? Welcome, welcome. If I didn't. Hey, Tony Switchy Art and Crafts. I love your channel. Everybody go to their channel and give them a follow or a, a sub subscribe. So that is how our weather is. We had, and it, I have literally never, ever gotten a tornado warning in San Diego, California before. But the storms have been bananas. Bananas. The flooding has been bananas. The rain has been bananas. I had a friend whose car did not make it was completely totaled and <laughs> underwater. Oh, I shouldn't laugh. Oh no. I've got a drop of water and it reactivated my paint. Okay, we're learning. So that happened. Can we fix this? Okay, so don't re-wet it unless you want to reactivate it. Wait. Kristen, welcome. She said, uh, they say, are you using a watercolor paper or mixed media black paper? Can I get watercolor paper that's black? Oh, I want that. This is just mixed media paper and it really like doesn't take the water very well. It's very, oh, hey, neck. here's, here's another design. It's very thin. Can I get watercolor paper that's black? Tell me about this, Kristen. All right, let's reactivate. I love this reactivation. It's like magic. Okay, we're reactivating the salmon. Let's go. I think I'm going to come a little closer in. Is our focus still good? Yes. Yeah, it's still good. Helpful says, here in Wisconsin, we've gone from sub-zero temps in January to 20 degrees above normal in February. We are supposed to get rain overnight with thunderstorms, which is very weird for winter. See, that's how we know we're having winter here, is rain. Mallory, hello and welcome. Just tuning in, happy to be able to catch you while you're live. If it's okay to ask any intuitions for Aquarius people. My 30th birthday was on January 24th. Well, I wouldn't say I'm an intuitive person that gives advice or readings or anything like that. But I can tell you as a fellow Aquarian, And what was it that just went to Aquarius, some planet? Now is our time. I think I'm just going to throw some salmon on these salmon and then come back and do details later. I'm just going to kind of zhuzh. Zhuzh first. Details later.
Friend Lorraine says, yes, I just searched and you can get watercolor paper in black. Okay, this paper is getting replaced. So my no buy year is a use what you have, which I had this pad already, until you decide that it doesn't work and then you buy some paper. So it's kind of a, um, more of a guideline than a rule, apparently. Need to come back in with the gray as well. Kristen says, yes, Stonehenge on Amazon has black. How did I not know about this? What kind of artist do I call myself? Mallory Lu 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 Luana, welcome. Uh, oh, I already said welcome to you. It says, I live in Florida. I live in the North Florida area, the panhandle near the Gulf. Used, I'm used to the rain. Also, I think salmon have a bit of green on them too. They have a little bit of a green hue. But we're obviously not going for realism here. I made my bear green, so. <laughs> Tony says, I really love your channel too. Yeah, 2024, I would say this is going to be my year of doing arts and doing crafts and doing stuff on my channel that aligns with what I'm interested in as opposed to what I think is going to get clicks and views. I'm over it. I'm over chasing the algorithm to try and get some kind of make some force something to happen that's really not anywhere in my control. I have to realize that the things that are in my control and the things that bring me joy are the things that I should be doing. And the weird thing is, as soon as I stopped caring about what I thought the algorithm wanted, I published a video that everybody loved. And I was like, oh, well, maybe if I stop caring, <laughs> it actually works out.
I mean, I've always done what I was passionate about, but I would get into a situation where I would then turn it into a series and do it for too long. And also, um, I started to do what I thought people wanted to watch as opposed to what I wanted to do. So I felt like, well, I do recipes and people want recipes and so I have to keep making up recipes. Stuff like that. Do you mean that the series outlasted my interest? Yes, absolutely. But then I felt like I owed more of the same to my viewers because maybe they were tuning in specifically for that. So then I felt like I shouldn't stop or I couldn't stop. Helpful says the color of the salmon depends on what body of water they live in. Salt water versus fresh water. In fresh water lakes, their scales have a rainbow effect and are called trout. Hmm. Tony's Witchy Arts and Crafts says, I'm also going to do what I want to do on my channel. Mallory says, watercolor is my main medium too. There's a product you can get. It's like a paint coat basically that will make any surface able to paint watercolor on. Hey, ink is here. Hi everyone, I made it finally. Welcome. Red Lorraine says, doing what you have passion for is always going to be a bigger draw than what you think people will be passionate about. That's true. And also it's like, you just have to kind of not care. You have to somehow give up, release, let go. Okay, I'm going to start doing my, I think I'm going to do my water because I probably shouldn't have touched the bear. I let the bear dry a little bit more and then I'm going to go back up and start doing the, the blue. So let's see, water. I think I can use a bigger brush down here and I think it's just going to be kind of a bright blue color to start. Oh no, that's way too bright. Let me mix something. I'll put some of this uh, grayish blue. Oh, I shouldn't have put my, my brush into that. <laughs>
Maybe I should have done this first. Eek, I think you're right. You should have done it first. And it looks like I also missed some of my leaves. This is a little bit frenetic back and forth. I think I'll get, every time I do a different Oracle card, I'll get more and more practice. And I wouldn't be surprised if I went back to some of my very first ones and redid them once I've done 52 cards. I feel like I will have, you know, developed a different style. I think what I'm going to do for the red is I'm going to go back in with a um, some of a deeper red, like kind of this um, this more of a burgundy color. And just kind of give it one little swipe at the bottom of each berry. Oh, I like that. My water is getting pretty gross. I think it's time for a new water. Inca says, being true to oneself and values is one aspect of a spiritual journey. Funny because the, the sigil for October is going to be, I live in alignment with my values, and I'm going to be doing some videos on that as well. But that's going to be the whole theme for my October. I try to make a community sigil every month for uh, everybody to use in any spells or craft. So since these are opaque, I should have done the water first and then 
put everything on top of it because you can do that with um, gouache like you could with acrylics. So we're learning, we're learning. Okay, time for a smaller brush if I got to get into these details. <laughs> Mallory says, Daniel Smith watercolor ground. Use like a first coat on any surface and then watercolor paints can be used on it, like on wood, glass, or any non-watercolor paper. Oh, that's cool. Let's get in here with some detail brush that had red on it. What am I doing? I'm losing my mind. New brush. Clean brush. I never get too worried about my my um, project on stream because I'm probably gonna keep working on it after the stream's over. And I also scan it into Photoshop, so I can fix any little issues there as well. Oh, I had a commercial I was gonna run and I forgot to run my ad. While I'm doing this, I'm gonna run my ad real fast. Meg says, got a jet, everyone happy crafting and best wishes to you all. Bye, Meg. Inca says, I think 2024 is a year of alignment and riding oneself along a focused path. I think that I'm going to, um, I'm just going to lean into fun and see where that takes me. That is the, those are my values is having fun. If it's not fun I'm, and I don't have to do it, I'm not going to do it. Okay, guys, here's my commercial. Let me know what you think. Instead of taking outside sponsorships this year, I'm sponsoring my own content. So this video is sponsored by me. Over the last few years, I've designed a whole series of magical journals, planners, and blank remorse, and I'm creating new witchy workbooks all the time. These magical crafting books can be found on Amazon and at the link below the video. The blank grimoires are the perfect place to store your notes about crystals, herbal plant allies, and tarot or oracle cards, or to plan out spell work and rituals. The journals are filled with writing prompts to get you in tune and aligned with your goals and values, and to help you begin shadow work, daily affirmations, or a gratitude practice. And the planners are undated and versatile, so you can plan your perfect morning routine, your week, or your month. To get your magical journal, planner, or blank or more, check out my magical crafting books at the link below the video. I made that to run during my live stream a couple of times, but of course, I forgot to do it. Too much water. Hey, this napkin turned out pretty.
Karen says, I love that you're sponsoring yourself. It's a great ad. I'm more likely to watch an ad by you than some unrelated something. Hasbrock is here. Hey. Yeah, I decided that sponsors were not going to happen anymore. I took sponsorships last year and it was just... It just, not a single one of them went well. Sometimes, uh, The people that I was sponsoring or talking about would then not have the product available to buy for months. It was out of stock. Other times I was sponsored by somebody who was like, I found out later was really a problematic business that I wished I hadn't had on my channel and I removed all of that content from my channel later and other people wanted to do sponsorships and I started planning out content for them and then when it came down to actually paying me to get started they just ghosted and another sponsor I had for years I've been using their product and talking about it for years just stopped paying me out of the blue so it was like every single thing that could go wrong went wrong last year <laughs> so I said no more I'm going to just sponsor myself I have products and I'm going to talk about them Oh, I should have done this blue first. It would have been so much easier. It's kind of fun though, it's like a coloring book. Stay within the lines. Helpful says, nicely done, those journals are gorgeous. I received the shadow work journal as a gift last year. Helpful. The shadow work journal is the one that I have had the worst um, reviews on because I made the shadow work journal to have some prompts and some suggestions for journaling right at the beginning. And then I left the rest of the pages blank because I didn't know what prompts people would want to write about. And I didn't want to assume that everybody would want to write about every prompt because I don't know your life. But people were upset that there weren't prompts and then a space and then a prompt and then a space to write about it on each page or each, every other page or whatever. Like my other journals have a prompt and then three pages to write and then a prompt and three pages to write. And so they expected the shadow work journal to be the same. So I am redoing my shadow work journal and I'm going to change the interior because you're able to do that on, um, on Amazon. You're able to change the interior pages of your, of your books because they're print on demand. And I'm going to put prompts and then leave three pages for journaling and a prompt and just like my other ones so that people like it better. But I feel like people will be skipping some of the prompts that don't apply to them. So it's kind of, I don't know, kind of no way to win on that one.
but just to let you know that probably by next month I will have um, revised it. That's one of those things that I had already wanted to have done by the first of the year, but I didn't quite get it done. It's hard to come up without many uh, shadow work prompts. Because I don't want to phone it in. I want every prompt to be good and useful. And that's not a perfectionism thing. That's just a wanting to do right by the consumer. Inca says, your books remind me of Llewellyn's Witches Date Books. Very nice. Oh, thank you. That's a very big compliment. I love those date books. says especially the crystal journal documentation I've been following you for years now and I want to collect many of them the crystal one is the one I've used the most I think I did it. Oh, you guys, that was not fun. But it was kind of fun, actually. Okay, I'm going to go in with a pen. I have this brush pen. feel like this is going to give me um, a guideline for my paint for my details because I don't think I can just go in with my paintbrush and paint it I think I have to do it by hand and then paint over And Lorraine says, yes, remove those obstacles. I don't remember what I was saying that you agreed with. <laughs> but then S. Brock says, good decision too. Oh, I'm so behind on chat. I'm sorry. I've, I'm backed up. Mallory says, I love journaling and I love that you create journals and planners specifically for magic practice. 
Helpful says, I read some of those reviews, but I didn't think they quite get it. I love all the space. So you guys, if I get the watercolor paper that's black and it's thicker than this, is it going to look more black? Because, because as Brock just said, I love the brown background. So this is actually black. There you go. So if you, if I tilt it, you can kind of see color better. Oh, you were talking about making ads for your own products instead of sponsored stuff. Yes. Yes. I forgot what I was talking about. So you can kind of see it's black, but I would like it to be like even deeper black, you know? Like I can do that in Photoshop though. Dolly Hula Doll Reynolds Dolce just got off work. I work at Torrid and I was, and it was a heck of a day. A Amy, your voice soothes me. Glad I could make it. Welcome. So I feel like whatever the highlight color is that we use, it will be where I've shown the black. Or do I leave the black and I just use the highlight color on the edgings or, hmm, let me think my thoughts here. V is here, welcome V. Mallory says, every journal I have, I answer through writing, scrapbooking, drawing, doodling, or anything else. That's how I journal. Kristen says, definitely a brush stroke workout. So this is where I drip the water. Oh, my bad. Sorry about that, you guys. I wasn't filming, so because I wasn't filming it. Decided to set, shut off. The darker black looks much better. So like if I have it this way, you guys can see kind of what I'm seeing in studio. And I'm going to do a darker, I think a darker blue. Um, kind of in my lighter blue to, to do the 
um, the little vibrations in the water. This kind of stuff could also be done with an acrylic paint pen, which I might consider bringing out my acrylic paint pens. And these kind of details, I'm not sure how, how well they will show up when I uh, reduce the size of this. He says, if I may ask, are you making your own Oracle deck? Yes, and this is our first card that we're painting. So, do you guys think I should make this? Should I make the green, the green, light green darker? Harlow's here, hey. Inca says, gotta get dinner started. I'm very glad I could be here with you all for a while. Thank you, Amy, you're welcome. What about a purple? No, we need to keep into the color scheme we've got going. Red? Well, if I do put purple in the bear though, or am I gonna put brown in the bear? Let's just try it.
Do we like the brown or do we hate the brown? Should I be using yellow for the sun? I wonder if I should have left that purple. Karen says, what kind of a brand of acrylic paint pens do you like? Uh, yes, Harlow says, I like Posca. I think Posca is good because they have a very fine tip to them. And then they have some blunt ones. this brown you guys and I feel like the salmon are kind of sad too I like this and I like the Sun but the bear and the salmon they just really need they need something Because remember, this is going to be really small. This is going to be on something the size of a playing card. Maybe they need something that's less realistic and more crazy. Okay, thank you for the super thanks. Maybe I should put purple on the bear and pink on the on the salmon and just go crazy with color. Because none of these things are going to be their actual color, are they? Realism is not what we're going for. Oh, hey, is anybody watching um, Death and Other Details on Hulu? I can recommend. It's kind of a fun, a fun show. We've been following along with that one. Mallory says, I put gold accents on the light green part of the leaves. Oh, okay.
like hints of the yellow and the halo around the crown of the bear. Yeah, I think I probably should be bringing some of that sunshine in everywhere. I don't know if the teal bear is, is the way. Is it a purple bear? Is it a purple bear with yellow highlights? I just don't know. Karen says, I'm watching the bear and I'm not really into it. I heard that it was difficult to watch, but that it was worth it. Is that, are you finding that to be true? Because I haven't started it yet, but I really do like the, the idea behind it. Purple or emerald green for the bear with a yellow aura. What about a polar bear? No, I don't think so. I don't know. I'm thinking, you know, the bears that are in the Pacific Northwest, the ones that are doing the salmon. Purple or emerald green for the bear with a yellow aura. Helpful says, we started watching The Curse on Paramount Plus and I'm not really enjoying it. The characters are so shallow. Yeah, I didn't watch that one. Is it, is it a, has episodes or is it a movie? Is that the people who do the fixer upper and they give the hundred dollars to the kid and then try to take it back? Is that the one I'm thinking of? Karen says, that's why I'm hanging in on it. A lot of arguing, arguing and yelling, not my vibe. Yeah, I don't want to bring that kind of energy into my house. I want to chill out or have fun or don't want to listen to people argue. <laughs> because I can keep painting over this bear, I'm just going to try purple and see what happens. Oh, the problem is it's activating the paint underneath it. So we're going to have purple with aqua.
Okay, we got all our highlights. <laughs> Hopeful says, my husband is really into watching Yellow Jackets. It gives me the creeps. What, um, what service is that one on? I think the purple is going to actually work, but it's going to take me about a thousand years. I do feel like the purple is going to work out. Purple bear with lighter purple highlights. And then bright pink fish. Like somebody had the idea of um, putting fixative down. That's a good idea too. Well, you guys, I think it's been over two hours. I should probably call it on the stream.
this painting, when I finally get it done, I knew I should have done purple from the beginning, darn it, um, will also become the uh, pen pal card for the month of February. So if you want to receive a pen pal card from me, you can become a patron at that level. And I usually just send this off to the printer and turns it into greeting cards. And I'm definitely going to be looking into getting some black watercolor paper so that I am not dealing with the issues that I have with this really thin paper, which is kind of buckling a bit. And I think I'll also feel like um, a little bit more confident on watercolor paper because that's what I've been using on stream for years. And it's just kind of what I'm used to using. I just didn't know it came in black. So thank you for everybody who looked that up for me. Yeah, I definitely don't want this uh, Oracle card deck to have all the traditional colors for animals. I feel like we could do a turquoise blue squirrel and we can do a red turtle and we can do a orange frog and it doesn't have to um, it doesn't have to be traditional color palettes. And then yeah helpful I think the entire deck will have a black background as long as I do the first few cards and I feel confident that it's all the cards are gonna look good. But I do want to try the first couple of cards, not on stream, but off stream, also as a white background. So I'm going to do the same design on a white background just to test it out. Because if it looks much better, then it might, I might go back to white. But as right now, I'm thinking black is the way. And also I think over time we're going to get a palette, a color palette that starts to develop that most of the cards are going to be. And then that way the whole deck will start to um, develop and look unified. But thank you guys for joining me for my very, very first try with gouache paints. <laughs> it has definitely been a learning experience, to say the least. I'm going to keep going on this, but um, I'm going to go ahead and end the stream. That way everybody can go about your daily business. And I will uh, post what the final card looked like somewhere. I don't know where I'll post it, but if you want to get it as a pen pal card, then you can get it in your mailbox. Hello, Lee Pitts, and who else? Mallory says, this is the first time I've actually been able to be part of one of the live streams. My schedule always ends up re-watching after. I'm so happy I got to join with the community. Thank you, guys. I always appreciate having people to chat with while I do my painting. And also, we came up with a name for the card. Perseverance. And that was all you guys.
Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and log off. But thanks for joining me, you guys. And I will see you in two weeks on Wednesday the 21st at 4 p.m. Pacific time for crafting. And the crafting is a craft kit that um, I developed that makes a self-love shrine. And I'm going to be doing, there are two versions of it. There's a pink version and a black version. And uh, I'm going to be doing the black version on stream. So I hope you'll join me in two weeks for another Art Witch Wednesday. Have a great night and I will see you all later. Thanks for watching.